today, um, the intent was to talk about Werfel, but we're in a configuration issue with that still. Um, I have, I have our, our lab guy looking at it, and, and I thought maybe I just missed something obvious, but apparently I have it. All right. So what we're going to talk about today is a, a bit about mobile design, possibly from a different perspective. All right. And I'm going to make a statement, and you tell me if you agree or disagree with the statement. All right? And my statement is mobile design. Right, let, me, let me rephrase this. Designing good mobile experiences, and again, from our perspective, we'll talk about websites, is mostly about getting our websites to look good on a small screen. Does that include working? For, yeah, yeah. To, well, well to, to work and to look good. All right, then I agree. Okay, you agree? David, do you agree? Absolutely. Most of the big ones are different. Why? 
because they recognize that, oh my goodness, this is quite a weather situation we're having here. Here's CNN's. Internet go on? No. No, I'm, I'm just looking at the weather map. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> CNN's full web page, and then I'll bring up their mobile. of the stories on the mobile page that there is on the full page. There's a lot on the full page. Alright. And, and it's presented differently and there's different content on there than that. So, if this were an essay question, Instead of a true or false question or multiple choice, and you're allowed to explain your answer, I would say, I would start out, if I were answering this question, I would start out by saying false because the first aspect of designing a good mobile experience is to look at your users and consider what are their goals as a mobile user as opposed to the goals of someone visiting the desktop site. Because that's going to, you know, the goals are what drives your design. All right. Now I know the folks uh, in this class, some of you have like a, a strong graphic design background, but there's sort of an aspect of that um, that almost uh, uh, comes before and drives the graphic design. And that is often what's called user-centered design. All right. I don't know if you guys get into that or not. But what user-centered design is, for the most part, is understanding the users, understanding the goals that they have, understanding the different kinds of users that are going to be visiting your site, and what their goals are. And the visual design that you make is going to serve what you've discovered in the user experience design portion of it. Yeah, the visual design is important, and making it look good on a small screen is important. But, you know... There's the what to do and then the how to do it. The visual design is largely in the area of the how to do it. All right? How do I make news stories look good on a mobile device? Well, you can do a lot of things visual design-wise to do that. Right? But deciding what you're going to do, how much content you're going to put in, you know, and so on. As was mentioned about Amazon, how the functionality is different on the full site versus the mobile site. Deciding what is going to be composed, what that mobile site is going to be composed of, again, is going to inform everything that you do. So, the first part of it is, I would say to this, is false, because first of all, designing a good mobile experience starts with identifying the goals of the mobile user as opposed to the desktop user. All right. And that's where we did all those things with, uh, with maybe deciding, hey, I'm going to have one page that does everything. All right? Because the goals are similar enough where I can do that and not get into too much trouble. Or maybe we say, you know what? The goals are so far different that I'm going to switch between the two different pages. All right? You can only decide that if you've thought through what's going to be on the mobile site and, and what the goals are of someone visiting the, the, the mobile site. Now the second aspect of this, and this is the aspect that we're getting in today, is that mobile devices are different 
than computers, all right, in a lot of important respects, all right. Nearly all mobile device has a camera. Many mobile devices are phones. It's carried around with us as opposed to sitting stationary in one place. The very fact that this is a different sort of device, this is intrinsically different. In other words, this isn't simply a one of those, but small. This is a different beast that shares some functionality with the computer, implies a different sort of design. All right. Now, we very briefly got into an example of that when we allowed, when I created the page that allows you to make a phone call if you're visiting it from a phone. Right? What would be the sense to have on a mobile website that many people are going to be viewing on a mobile phone a thing that says, call me at 440, what's my phone number? I'm trying to think of my phone number here. 440-366-4796. I think that's my phone number here. All right. What would be the point on a mobile device of doing that? That's what you do on desktop computers. Why? Because desktop computers ain't phones. All right? So that's the best you can do on a desktop computer is give someone the phone number. Can you do better on the phone? Absolutely you can do better on the phone. All right? You can do better on the phone because it's a phone <laughs> that allows you to browse the web. So I can put a link on here to actually make a phone call. Then, I'm not just making a small version of the website, right? If I had a website that had a phone number and I simply duplicated that, I'm not really designing a good mobile experience. I'm simply translating the experience of the desktop to the mobile device. But because a mobile device is different and has its own unique capabilities and in a lot of ways surpasses the abilities of a desktop, desktop can't make phone calls. All right. We want to be aware of that. We want to design stuff into it to really take advantage of it. Um, if you go back over time and you look at any time something new is created, like, like if you look at different, different forms of entertainment, all right, for example, think of recording, audio recording. All right. What were the first audio recordings like? All right. You'd get a band, you'd put them in a room, you'd record them, and then you're able to share that. That's great, right? Back when you couldn't do that, before you could do that, that was probably an awesome thing to do, right? To be able to take a band, have them play, record it, and then everyone could hear it, not just the people that were happened to be in the room at the same time. All right? What they were doing then in the recording studio, all right, is they were essentially reproducing the concert experience, all right? Reproducing the concert experience. At a certain point in time, a lot of innovators came in and started doing things like, you know what? We don't have to just duplicate the concert experience. We can, like, do a lot of cool stuff that you can only do in a recording studio, that you couldn't do in concert. I could play a duet with myself, for example. Can't do that in a concert studio, right? But I could record a track of me playing the piano and another track of me playing piano on top of that. All right? Um, and again, you know, you go back, especially um, in the 60s and the 70s, when like the little light bulb started going off. And again, it happened a bit before that, but really, as far as, as mainstream, in the 60s and 70s, you know, you have folks like Stevie Wonder playing just about every instrument on the record, right? Can't do that in concert. So what did they do? They, instead of duplicating an old experience, they created a new experience, taking advantage of the environment that they're in. All right? So it's not just a duplication of a concert. It's a recording. All right? And you can talk about this in, in any number of different things. You know, entertainment things are the most obvious ones. You know, the first movies were like duplications of plays. Right? You know, they just have a camera and they duplicated it and all that. And then people were like, hmm, 
you know, there's a lot more stuff I can do with film than just take a, take a, a capture of people acting in a play. I can use a film in an innovative way to do things that I couldn't do in a theater or, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a play, in, 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 uh, in that sort of theater. All right? So, when mobile devices first became popular for surfing the web, think of that as the goal was to duplicate the experience of the desktop web application except on a mobile browser. All right? In other words, make the site work, make the site look good on a small screen. And that's a good step, right? That, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, essentially, that's what we've kind of been doing for the first X weeks of the class, right, to a large degree, all right? But I guess what the challenge is, and some of the things we're going to talk about today, and if I ever get the Warful issues uh, straightened out, we'll talk about it uh, again then, and some of the, and the things that we talked about as far as uh, uh, being able to call the phone, says, okay, let's do better than that. Let's take advantage of the fact that it's a mobile device instead of a desktop, all right? Again, the very first example we had of that is being able to actually place a phone call if you're on a phone as opposed to on a desktop. So that's one thing we did better on our mobile device than we could do on a desktop because we could truly make it a mobile experience as opposed to duplicating a desktop experience. Now, this is a good book that I got that I'm reading, and I'm only part way through it, but... They talk about a few things that I won't say are necessarily unique to mobile experiences and mobile devices, but they become, how can I say this? They become probably more important. They're a bigger deal uh, with mobile devices. And they talk about the ability uh, to sense your context. All right? Know where you are. All right, on a mobile device. Now, you can, within limits, know where you are on a desktop device, too, but the idea of knowing where you are is a lot more important on a mobile device than it would be on a desktop. Let's say, for example, I have a hotel chain, all right, and I had a mobile application. Wouldn't it be great if the mobile application knew where the person was all right, the, the, the web site, knew where the person was and told them where the nearest of their hotels is. So you have someone traveling, maybe the, the hotel that screwed up their reservation, the first hotel, so they're looking for another hotel to stay. So you go and pop up the website and it says, hey, you're nearby such and such. That'd be great, wouldn't it? That'd be a great thing. Other, as opposed to doing, what would be the desktop version of that? The desktop version of that would be, well, maybe you could put in your zip code and do a search and it'll tell you what it is, all right? Yeah, that's okay. That's pretty cool, right? But it's not as good as giving a true mobile experience of someone traveling through the world and being able to have their device know where they are, all right, and being able to write a web, uh, a web uh, application or a website that is location aware and can give them better information maybe than they would at a desktop, all right? Weather information. Again, typically weather information might allow you to put your zip code in, might store a cookie. Again, that's okay for someone at a desktop because their desktop doesn't change locations very often, all right? But a mobile device is with you. So being able to know where you are there's a whole bunch of things as far as context awareness. Uh, again, being aware that this is an Android phone and not an iPhone would be an example, I would say, of context awareness. So, if an organization has two versions of the app, instead of giving me two links, just give me the link that I need. Just give me the link to the Android app as opposed to, here's the Apple, here's, you know, here's where you can find the Apple app, here's where you can find the Android app, all right? So context sensitivity. Um, I 
The, uh, the second thing that they talk about beyond contact sensitivity is media capture. All right? And media capture, I guess I would expand that to say taking advantage of all the other things that the mobile device does. Take pictures, make audio recordings, um, take video, and easily share that with people. Text messaging, and so on. So, you know, if I was, you know, if I was at a desktop, my desktop might have a webcam attached to it, but I wouldn't say, you know, high percentage do. But my mobile device does. So could you imagine if I was able to, for an auto insurance company, you know, I'm in an accident, you know, take a picture of my car and send it to them and upload it right there, as opposed to driving home and whatever. That would be developing a true mobile experience and not simply duplicating some sort of desktop experience. Did you actually see that new State Farm commercial? No, I did not. It's, um, I, I'm not 100%, but I think you open the app and you, um, you like drag your finger uh -huh. along the route of what your car and the other car did. And okay. you like connect them where they hit and stuff, and right. then you send the information like that. Oh, that's awesome. I, I was like, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I'm not aware of that. I actually have State Farm, so I should, I should check <laughs> it out. That would almost be worth, uh, maybe I'll back out uh, our van that's in the garage now and run into it just so that I can test out that, that <laughs> functionality. Um, and, and again, now, now do keep in mind that our focus in this class is on websites. Uh, I guess the whole, the, the bigger picture is bringing apps into it as well. But yeah, that's a great example of something you probably couldn't do that or couldn't do that easily uh, on there. Especially when you can sit, you know, on a desktop. You know, who has a desktop with them at the scene of an accident? You know, you could actually bring up a map of where you're at, right? And all you'd have to do is draw with your fingers, you know. Um, instantly, it would capture the weather conditions, which are important sometimes in accidents, and, and, and so on. And the last thing is mobile devices have a strong social component of that. To be able to take something and tweet it, or share it on Facebook, and so on. You know, this, is, this is many people's connection of the world. All right? This is how people interact with their, their coworkers, their friends, etc. So that is, you know, far more so than the computer. This is, th this is and is becoming people's, you know, uh, connection to the world. Um, which comedian, I, I think it was Louis C.K., I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, a comedian, was talking about how, and this is not too many years ago. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, before cell phones were real popular, maybe, I don't know when they really started exploding, but you know, say in the early 90s, you know, you had to call the phone, all right? I couldn't call my daughter. I had to call the phone at our house. So if she was somewhere else, unless the cats are answering it, no one's going to pick up, and of course I leave a message, you know. You call that number if you wanted me, if you wanted her, if you wanted, you know, anyone else in my family, you would call that number. That's the phone, right? That's our phone. Not everyone having their own phone. And it doesn't travel with people either, the phone. The phone stayed in a certain place, which if you think about it, again, was, the, was pretty great technology at its time, but you're not calling a house. You want to talk to a person, right? So it makes more sense for the thing to be tied to that. So again, the idea of the mobile phone and that becoming someone's connection to the world really has taken off like wildfire and it continues to do that. So, what's my overriding point and, and, and what are some of the takeaways and what are some of the things that we're going to look at over the next uh, couple of days? My takeaway is when you're developing good mobile experiences, specifically websites, 
try to think beyond simply duplicating a desktop site on a smaller screen? Are there things that you can do to make it truly a rich mobile experience as opposed to, yeah, does the same thing the website does or does a subset of what the website does, but it works on a smaller screen? All right. And the first thing that we're going to consider, we talked about location, given the fact that a mobile device travels with someone. We're going to talk about geolocation, all right? How you can identify where people are. And there's a bunch of ways that you can do it, all right? We'll talk about this first. I want to get into some examples, so we'll talk about this now. Uh, probably next time we'll talk about alternatives on how to do this, all right, and the respective advantages and disadvantages. Because this stuff can be done client side, this stuff can be done server side, and there's advantages to both. So what I want to do is I found some examples today that I want to look at as far as doing geolocation. Now, this is built into, this is a, a feature of HTML5, but as we know, not necessarily all browsers support this. I hope we have Google Chrome installed on this. Because they, they tend to be. Firefox, I believe, I'll look at the version. I think this version supports it. Do we have Chrome? I do not see Chrome. Let's try Firefox. If not, I'll download Chrome real quick. And I'm going to Google this. Oops. What is that campus update thing saying? <laughs> Sorry. <Is> OK. <laughs> yeah, it's like, should I get out of here? Uh, all campuses are open and classes are in session. W3 schools. All right, try it. Notice one thing. I clicked to try it, and it might be a little hard to see, but I got a little alert up here that said, do I want to share my location with W3 schools? Again, for privacy reasons and all that, um, your browser wants to keep you safe. So your browser tells you Browser won't give your uh, location unless you explicitly allow it. All right. So share location. I will say always share location. All right for this. I'll click try it, and it will tell me where I am, latitude and longitude. All right. Well, that's not particularly effective. <laughs> right. I mean. Uh, I guess I'm at that latitude and longitude, but you couldn't, I couldn't argue with it if it, if it wasn't. <laughs> you know, I have no idea what that is. Let's see what other things that we can do. All right. Here is code for what happens if we don't or our browser isn't enabled. Let me go up and open up IE because IE does not support this. I, I, say, I, I know it's a shock, yeah. But, for example, if I go and try it here on IE, I'm 
I get a message, in this case, 